that, Grom. It's me. Look, I'm not going to be in biology today. Would you cover me? Doesn't matter. Yeah, well, Delbert reckons he knows a lot of things. I'm going somewhere I can get the truth. An expert, laters. Morning. Morning. Carry on, nurse. You're looking very smart. You got plans? Yeah. Job interview. Were you leaving? Shh, Jimmy. Sorry. Well, I take it Julia doesn't know. Not yet. But I'm sure it won't come as a surprise. This is about Ruth. Not entirely. But it did get me thinking, like, maybe it's time for a change. Where's the interview? Um, a private practice in town. It's a new one at um, Elmwood Park. Yeah, I've heard of it. Well, look, um, I don't want you to leave, but if you need a reference... Thanks. Bear that in mind. Wish me luck. Yeah, luck. What time is Henry seeing Ruth? Um, Julia's taking her there now. She's been very supportive. Hi. Hey. Was that Michelle I saw you with that side? I didn't think she was in this morning. Uh, no, no, she's, um, she's not. She's, um, she's just wanted a quick word. Probably distancing herself from the theatre of war. Well, I think that's a bit... Harsh. Unfair, blinkered. No disrespect, but I think common sense will prevail as far as Ruth is concerned. You also think you have perfect dress sense. No disrespect. Melody's a capable board, but I don't think she's used to dealing with the Ruths of this world. Henry Salisbury is. And what if his opinion's the same as hers? If and when it comes to it, you can strap me in a straitjacket. Beverly Kitt, Head of Human Resources. You're the last to arrive, so we can get started. Last? Yes, I'm going to be taking you all through a sort of induction morning. I'll show you the facilities and give you a rundown on our directives and our expectations. Right. Then you'll get an individual interview. All very informal. How does that sound? Yeah, it sounds great. Good. Right, everybody, if you'd like to come with me, we'll start with a coffee and a talk from our clinical director. I want the facts of life. Sorry? The facts of life. Sex education. Men, women, babies. Gooseberry bushes. I'm serious. Okay, I want to know. I figured a doctor would be the right place to start. Well, I agree. I'm just a bit confused. How you got this far in life without finding out? Right. Oh, here we are. Thank you, Julia. It's OK? No, really, it was good having someone with me. It's OK seeing Henry again. I told you that everything would be all right. Ironic, really. I was there for this evaluation. We didn't really feel like I was being judged, you know? Well, maybe that's all over and done with now. Don't want to be in that position again. It depends on what he's going to say, doesn't it? Daylight, unholy. 
As you know, they're just me and Gran at home. And no other relatives. And you're not happy asking her this? Because she's my Gran. And she's a very devout woman. And that's why she had you excluded from sex ed lessons at school? There's a time and a place, she said. Hmm. Why don't you do what everyone else does when they want information go on the internet? I don't have internet access at home. And the ones at school are locked to certain sites. Okay. Which leaves going to my Gran my pastor, or believing what my schoolmates tell me, which doesn't sound right. Do you think they're winding you up? Everything they say? Just about. Can I ask, how did you find out? I mean, how old? Um, I think I was probably about seven when I learnt the basics. But uh, what sort of things are your friends telling you? Well, there's one, Mark. He keeps going on about there's certain places on a woman, you only have to touch them and they go mad. Like, women are a games console. Right. And he swears blind is what my neighbours get up to. Only I don't... It just sounds wrong, you know? Fool boy. Not a tidy boy in his body. A nun's habit. Uh, well, some couples do like to spice up their sex life with. Um, Fantasy, role playing. Her husband wears those. They're shorts made of leather. Bloke slaps their legs. Oh, uh, Lady Husband. And they always play the same piece of music, something classical. I don't know what it is, something about Donna. But her name's not Donna. No, oh, you got me there. <laughs> Mark says they're kinky, pervy, you know. But, like, it's a good thing. Okay, we're, uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, start with the basics. For any of you unfamiliar with our latest developments, we're about to install a new robot surgeon. By some serious technology. Well, our visitors pay top rates. It's only fair we offer them the best treatments from the best practitioners, and that's using the best facilities that are on the market. This is OR1. Excuse me, what happens if a patient doesn't have enough money to pay extra? like they develop complications and they have to stay longer than planned. Well, as nursing staff, you wouldn't have to deal with that, shall we? Yes. Have you got a minute? <clears throat> it's uh, about this assessment thing. It does seem to have divided opinions. How do you really feel? That you shouldn't worry if Henry's assessment differs from yours. Well, that doesn't make any sense, unless my opinion doesn't count for much around here. Are you saying don't worry because people think that I'm too close to the situation so my judgement isn't sound? No. Well, will my assessment just get thrown out and put down to inexperience if Henry decides that Ruth isn't fit to come to work? You're feeling undermined because a second opinion's been brought into play. Anyone would feel the same. Would you? Whatever the outcome, you have my full support as one of the practice partners. Right. It was a no-win situation, however you look at it, really, wasn't well, it? Well, stop looking at it, and whatever you do, don't back down from your opinion. Julia, I need a word. Right, well, you know where I am if you need any more advice. I think you've covered everything. Some stuff I didn't even imagine. You okay? My grand did that. Well, everything except for the peanut butter and the nun's habit. <coughs> Joke, it's all very natural and very healthy. Take it she doesn't know you're here. What'd you tell yours? Well, maybe you should try explaining it to her. You're joking, aren't you? You said she's a very moral woman. She might not like any secrets from her. She doesn't know, it won't hurt her. 
Just once. Yeah, but it was something that you didn't know that brought you here. I've got to go. Go to class, yeah. Okay, thanks for the help. Want some fatherly advice? Oh. Any danger of a coffee round here? Oh, go on. I'll be mother. Daddy. Good morning, campus surgery. I want to know if you had a patient this morning called Freddie Clemson. I'm afraid I can't give out that kind of information. I want to speak to a uh, Dr. Granger. Well, I'm sorry, but he's not available. Is there anyone else who can help? But I'm his official guardian. I insist. If he did come here on his own, he's probably mature enough to see a doctor in confidence. But he might be sick. Well, can I suggest you take that up with him? You think he will tell me the deceitful boy? I'm asking you. Is there anything else? Not that you can help with. Who is your boss? I want to complain. Well, that is your right. Or maybe I should call the health authority, see what they have to say. Foolish woman. Well, you've had quite a breadth of experience. I know if I have my depth heading up a nursing team. If you feel there's anything I'm not qualified to cover in the job here, then... Not at all. If anything, I'd say you're overqualified. How do you mean? Your current position has given you a great deal of independence and autonomy. Here, you'll be part of a team. In what way? Well, we can speak to the head of nursing at lunch. He'll give you the bigger picture. What well, does it mean, less individual care of patients? <sighs> Let's just say, here, you'll be working to ensure that customer care is at maximum efficiency. There's not much time for hand-holding, not with a 72-hour turnaround on most of our units. Units? Patients. Here's another one. Melody, you wanted to, um... Uh, I felt I should bring Julia in on what we were discussing earlier. I was concerned. I'd like to know if you feel that we've supported you throughout this whole Ruth situation. Not particularly. I see. Well, I'm very sorry if you feel we've put you into an impossible situation. It is difficult to separate the personal from the professional. There's always fallout. Yeah, yeah, I know that. It's just that this time it's harder because it's a colleague who's upset other colleagues who are friends. Well, whatever the outcome, there will be no repercussions. It's not going to affect your position here with us at all, OK? I need you to trust me on this. Yeah, I do, I do. It's just, it's like he said, Personal and professional. Well, you shouldn't concern yourself so much in how this will affect Ruth. No, it's not so much Ruth, it's Michelle. I, I don't know how to handle this without making a complete mess. Of... Hold that thought. Julia Parsons? Oh, Henry, thanks for getting back to me so soon. Yeah. OK. That's fine, I'll read it and get back to you. No, no, not at all. Thanks, bye-bye. Well? He's emailing the assessment over to me now. Oh, Daniel, um, I got a call earlier from somebody claiming to be Freddie Clemson's guardian. She's fishing for info. Which they didn't get. What would you take me for? She got all fire and brimstone mine when she realised she wasn't getting any answers. She said he was a deceitful boy. Really? Yeah. Well, thanks for the heads up. I'll give her a call, do some damage limitation. Well, actually, maybe the personal touch is the better way to go. Full charm offensive, as only you can. It's what a father would do. <clears throat> she was really fearsome, and she said that she was going to call the health authority. What? Well, it might just be idle threat. She might just get in touch with Julia instead. Oh, hi, everyone. Thanks a lot for this. Um, Henry's assessment. And his official opinion is that he concurs with Melody. Ruth is well enough to return to work, so I'm sure we will agree that's good news. That's great. Definitely. Well, what does that mean in real terms? Well, personal feelings aside, it means that we are legally obliged to take her back. So no more protests or recriminations, OK? What about Michelle? Well, she's just going to have to accept the decision like everybody else. What does Henry say exactly? Well, he's uh, generous in his praise for us and the way we supported Ruth as a team. He's impressed that we've given the whole assessment process so much consideration. Well, if we couldn't, who could? You know, our expertise does make the situation unique. Anyway, thanks very much, everyone. Ruth comes back. That's an end to it, OK?
Oh my giddy aunt. <laughs> you dirty, shameful man! What? So how did you find Joseph? He knows his mission statement. Well, he certainly was impressed by you. In fact, he's asked me to offer you a job. Really? Congratulations, he wants you as part of his team. So, when can you start? Tell him that I'm flattered. But I'm going to have to say no thanks. <laughs> I don't think private practice is right for me after all. And if I was to increase your salary offer? Oh, no, no, it's not about the money. It's always about money. Not this time. So the mill can offer you something we can't? Well, I get job satisfaction there. I don't think I'll get that here. I hope you don't think I've wasted your time. Not at all. Look, if you don't mind, I'd like to keep you on file. You never know. OK. Michelle, you've been one of our best applicants to date. So it's worth bearing that in mind, whatever you decide. Mrs. Clemson, please! You know my name, dirty man? Been spying on me too? <laughs> Wicked! Shameful Run! man! Go inside, Freddy, and call the police. Tell them I've got a pervert. Your granddad would be so proud. Freddy, tell your grandmother who I am, please. You know this nasty man? You've got it all wrong. Did he do something to your boy? Did you touch my grandson, dirty man? I didn't lay a finger on him. He's a doctor, Grand. I went to him this morning. You're Dr. Granger? Uh-huh. How did you know his name? You went to see this? Has Henry called? Yes! <laughs> Come on! Well done! Oh. <laughs> I can't believe you went through my pockets. And that's worse than you sneaking off. I didn't sneak. You didn't tell me either. Did your granddad and I teach you deceit? Freddy's not deceitful, Mrs. Clemson. I think he's proved himself to be a very capable and intelligent young man. And should I listen to you, peeping Tom? Watching people in their houses. You think you can tell me about my grandson? It's partly your neighbor's behavior that made Freddy come to see me which was the right thing to do, given the circumstances. And what circumstances are those? I didn't have anyone else I could go to that I'd trust Don't Grant. you raise your voice at me! All right, this isn't helping, Mrs. Clemson. Freddie came to see me for the right answers, instead of relying on some stupid misinformation, which could have got him in a lot of trouble. About what? About sex. Mm. Which was the sensible thing to do. And if you raised him, he's a credit to you. And who are you a credit to? Dr. Peeping Pervert. Further. All due respect, you're the one with the handcuffs. It were my granddad's. He was with the police. He wouldn't have stood for your nonsense. He was a good man. I've no doubt. My Isaac was respected in a time when people expected honesty and morality from the police and teachers and doctors. You're very chipper. Am I? Given things didn't go the way you expected. Oh, you mean Ruth? Well, I've had time to mull things over. Think I stepped up to the ball too early on that one. Should have stayed at the crease. Oh, that's very magnanimous. Well, it's academic, really. She's bound to come a cropper at some stage. Meaning? Poor girl's head is full of squirrels juggling chainsaws. She'll come back, make a monumental screw-up, and Julia will be forced to sack her. Backed by you. Her return's just a temporary imbalance. No need to sweat the small stuff. So, in the long run, you get what you want. Correction. I get what the practice wants. We should take in a match. Edgebaston's not far from here. We could take a picnic. Lily? So you think all doctors are immoral these days? I think we live in godless times. Time was when the community looked up to the people that took care of them. Now police get attacked. Firefighters have stones thrown at them. People don't ask me when they come to see me. They demand. They threaten. People have rights. So? 
So the job description's changed. Some days I go in and I find that I'm a, a social worker. Others an agony aunt, a teacher. And who were you in my alley? Well, you know what? I was kind of a detective, trying to work out why Freddy came to see me behind your back. I thought you were ill, you know. I couldn't come to you. Not about... There's a time and place for some matters. And this is it. With family. With the woman who taught Freddy his morals and manners. Where better? Where else? What? Well, I couldn't find out at school. You stopped that. Where did you intend that Freddy would learn the facts, Mrs. Clemson? Not from a slippery tongue serpent like you. Or from Mr. and Mrs. Sodom Gomorrah next door. With all due respect, what does what they get up to next door even matter? It's their life. It's not hurting anyone. Least of all you. Hey. Hey, how'd it go? What was the place like? They're getting one of those new robot surgeons. Who? Yeah. Trouble is, they want a robot staff to go with it. They did offer me a job on the spot, though, which, of course, was a major ego boost for me. But? I'd be like RT flaming D2, strutting around the place making beeping noises. <laughs> well, that was only your first interview. There'll be others. Yeah, I don't want to try anywhere else. Why? It's Ruth, isn't it? I'll shoot the messenger. I'm sorry if you think I've been deceitful. I suppose you think I'm a foolish old woman. Never. Dr. Granger was right. You made me who I am. Only I got told something stupid and I wanted to know the truth. About everything. Dr. Granger set me straight. And I'm glad. You're glad he told you? Can you imagine the talk we might have had? You're growing up so fast. Just like your father. The trouble he gave me. Dad. The times I took a carpet beater to him. Come and have a talk. Tell me what that clever doctor said. I promise to just listen. I seem to have offended you. You're seriously telling me you have no idea how cruel and unfeeling you've been towards Ruth? Well, I'd prefer to say professional. And you can balance that against what's happening to a vulnerable young woman. Well, I realise feelings are running a tad high. It's not only ignorant of you, but shows how insultingly unprofessional you are. Isn't that a bit of an overreaction? You know, it was your apparent kindness and generosity to people around you that finally won me over, Heston. Without that... Well, I haven't changed. And that makes it worse. Was it all an act? To cover up your misanthropy, your pathetic attitude towards anyone with mental illness. Well, the skin's not broken, luckily. There is going to be some bruising, though. It's difficult to check for myself, I suppose. Still, all patched up. The thing is, that bruising, there seems to be some kind of pattern. Oh, uh, well, listen. Thank you for looking. Um, I better get on. So, how did you do it? I slipped, I fell down like a sack of spuds. Stupid. Oh, poor old thing, not so steady on your pins. The thing is, those shapes. Yeah, it was the manhole cover. I fell down really hard, like I said. No, to Granger? Yeah. Hey, Freddy, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, really. Just came to say thanks. Ah. You really helped. We had a long talk after. I just ended up sorting all sorts. You gave me a right laugh. Oh, well, no. Hell and damnation, that. <laughs> she was really OK. The charm of things it worked. My grand's faith is like her strength. Her daily guidance, you know. She's just cautious. Maybe a bit naive, yeah. Her generation, it was all different. Oh, well, they had no friendly doctors to go and visit. <laughs> well, she kind of approves of you. Now she's had time to think in spite of everything. Approves? That's a real compliment from her. Well, I'll see you. Oh, and she says sorry about the carpet beater and handcuffs. She hopes it didn't hurt too much. Carpet beater?
<laughs> Can't you see? My first concern was for the practice. You stopped seeing her as a co-worker, someone you knew. You only saw the illness. We have to look at the bigger picture. We have seniority here. What would you have done if she was your patient? Well, that's irrelevant, but my assessment would stand. And what would you have done if it was me? My decision would be the same. Look, this is getting out of proportion. Can't we just... Look, neither of us have evening surgery. Let's start the weekend now. We could go away somewhere. You know exactly where you can go. Lily. Enough. I don't want to be with you. What's the point? You can't mean that. I can. You know, you used to accuse me of being cold and clinical. But all along, it's you that's had the heart of ice. Ben Hamilton. The Ben Hamilton? You've been away for a long time. Too long. I implore you. Mend my broken heart. How do you think you'd feel if Ruth did to you what she'd done to Michelle? I go, I'm the only one that can see how dangerous that she is. Being in the wrong place at the wrong time sets off a life-changing chain of events in the final of a week-long Moving On drama starring Leslie Sharp. That's next on BBC One Scotland.